Next Curve. Hi, everyone. This is Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and I am here once again, day two of the 5G Summit, Qualcomm's 5G Summit, uh, being held here at the Intercontinental Hotel in lovely San Diego. And uh, I am joined here by Dev Singh. Dev, you want to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to uh, the audience? Thank you, and thanks for being here. I mean, it's uh, Absolutely. after three years of pandemic and all, we are now having events that we are able to see each other in oh, yeah. Yeah. together. So it's really nice. So I'm Dev Singh. I am the head of robotics, drones, and intelligent machines business at Qualcomm within the IoT. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as we see this digital transformation happening, Drones, robotics are going to play a big role mm -hmm. in the uh, industrial automation and uh, all the enterprises as well. And robotics, as Qualcomm moves from focus from the mobile to adjacent markets mm -hmm. like automotive and IoT, digital yeah. transformation and connected intelligence is, is a big part of that story. Yeah. And robotics yeah. fits in very well, right. so it is a very good focus area in Qualcomm. Yeah, and you know what? It, it's interesting that you say that because you know, uh, for the, the folks who follow me, they know that I'm pretty big in the IoT. And one of the things that we we talk about uh, regarding IoT in terms of its next evolution, because you know, IoT is like, you know, it's been kind of a weird term, right? It, it's been it's a catch-all. Catch all. Yes. <laughs> all right, yeah, catch-all. In, in, right. It's, it's not a phone, it's not a right. car, everything else is IoT. Right, yes. right, right. But you know, it really start off pretty simple, right? You're, you are, you have sensors, Yes. And it, you have instrumentation of assets or things, and then you have intelligence, and then it's connected. That connection allows you to tap into uh, deeper, more powerful compute resources, what have you. Absolutely. Right? But then when you look at it from a solutions perspective, you know, in order to really get valuable from a lot of this stuff, visibility is great, right? Yes. But you kind of have to have that closed loop, right? But it's kind of, it, it, you know, it is interesting that Qualcomm is kind of closing the loop, right? Yes. With the, the robotics and then all the other stuff that you guys do on the sensory end, right? Because you have a whole portfolio for doing Absolutely. that, right? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I guess you guys kind of have a closed loop story, which is is uh, interesting. I yeah, totally. I mean, and not only in enterprise, or not only in industry, it's consumer yeah. side as well, right? Like, you take a home, there's so many IoT devices in the house. You have what right. uh, your smart TVs, your mm -hmm. refrigerator is smart. That's an IoT device now. Yeah. You have your doorbells to uh, the cameras and the robots. Right. For example, cleaning robots at home. So now, right. if you fast forward that into a city or enterprise or a factory, right. same thing there, right? All these things come right. together to bring the productiveness of right. any of those things working yeah. together, making it happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and would you say? Would you say that, that I mean that really can garner a, a new level of automation, right? Because that's really what you're trying to do with these autonomous machines, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so, tell me a little about what you guys are doing in this space. I, I don't think a lot of folks really have a lot of visibility to this domain that Qualcomm is playing in. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you take a step back, right? Mm -hmm. um, and even Christian's keynote, he did bring this point out saying. Consumers now demand or expect stuff to be available to them at the moment. It's it's an expectation. It's more yeah. than an expectation now. It's a norm, right? Mm -hmm. For example, it's we, I call it a real-time economy, right? Mm -hmm. You want a Uber. You want it now, not tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's what's happening across the board. I want to order something from Amazon. I want to order something. It needs to show up at my door in a day. Now the day expectation is going to be hours. How all this can happen? Yeah. This cannot happen without automation. It cannot happen without uh, uh, making this at scale, right? Right. If you look at, I mean, a package comes to your door, but so much happens in the back end. Right. You have fulfillment centers. You have the delivery process. You have the factories that make the goods. All of this. Right. So digital transformation is all across to enhance the experience on the consumer side as well, right? Mm. And more and more this happens, you will see the factories have to be reconfigurable mm. to be able to meet the demands. Right, right. The warehouses have to be uh, right. smarter to do the fulfillment, then the delivery process, the first mile, last mile has to be fully automated. 
And now with labor shortage, with all of this and the scale, automation robots play a big picture, mm. big role on, on all of that. And at Qualcomm, what we are doing is we uh, we are anticipating the needs, we are working with the ecosystem, and we are privileged to be there because more and more we are seeing that Qualcomm is becoming a de facto choice for mm. robotics. Mm. I mean, there are startups that take off-the-shelf devices, make POCs, mm. but when they want to scale, right. they need an uh, integrated yeah. processor that gives the intelligence yeah. that is needed, the connectivity that's needed, yeah. and that's what we are doing here is enabling the ecosystem mm. to enhance the whole pipeline, right, from the factory automation yeah. to warehouses to first while last mile experience right. to retail. With the digital transformation happening, yeah. robots is what we are enabling. You know, I'm, I'm like thinking, as you were talking, it kind of occurred to me that actually what you guys are bringing to the table is more than, and, and this just popped into my head, okay? You know, um, this is unscripted. <laughs> is, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, because if you think about what digital transformation is, that is the application of digital technologies and data to build new business capabilities, modalities of doing business right. or living your life, whatever. That's digital transformation. But you know what we're really talking about here is not RPA like in the sense of digital robots, you know, and automation. We're talking about physical things that you're enabling and you're digitally enabling them, but then there's this cyber physical thing that's happening, right? So maybe I mean the, uh, we at this moment might be coining a new term Cyber physical transformation, <laughs> right? I, I mean, think, I because think. I mean, think about it. Your drones, the AGVs that we talked about earlier before we push the play button, AMR, or the core yeah. Button. yeah, AMR. All these things. These are these are physical things that actually uh, need to be controlled. They do things in the physical realm, and they they encompass a lot of the different types of technologies from a hardware perspective sure. that support you know um, the IOT and then now beyond if we talk about that closed loop right absolutely no, totally uh, I mean, thanks for calling the new term it's, yeah. it's great I like it okay, I'll license to, <laughs> to you guys royalty free <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is happening and this is touching all like there yeah. you, you can see construction site happening there's so much labor yeah. intensive processes right. but doing things in the right time mm -hmm. doing things uh, and we've gone through this whole thing in mm -hmm. pandemic time we had yeah. huge supply chain issue we will learn from this experience yeah. we'll see how things will get better and mm -hmm. this answer is going to be autonomous mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. robots autonomous machines right. intelligent robots right. and the smart intelligent edge uh, wherever it is it is at home it yeah. is at factory it is at all right. so it, traditionally, intelligence was all attributed to the cloud. Right, right. But we know that, okay, cloud, there is time for cloud, but then edge is very equally important and edge is becoming more intelligent because of multiple reasons, right? Yes. And now with the 5G connectivity is becoming connected. Right, Intelligent right. edge. So we are seeing this happening across, across right. domains. Yeah. Be it retail, be it infrastructure, be it energy. Right. I'll give you an example. Uh, if you take wind farms, I mean, mm -hmm. wind farms, just uh, one example in wind farms is inspection. Mm -hmm. Wind farms are uh, energy utility companies, they are yeah. regulated industries, they need to make sure, first of all, they have millions of dollars of worth of assets. Right, right. And it is in their best interest to make sure they run in a, in a very efficient tip top condition, so mm -hmm. they will inspect them. Now, because it's a regulated industry, Regulation wants them to inspect them as well. How is the inspection done today? Yeah. There are three people who shut down the wind turbine. It's height of the Eiffel Tower. They repel up and down. Yeah. Eight hours, do the job. But think about all of that. So eight hours of lost production, right? Three man hour, man days. And then it's dangerous job as well. Right, Hazardous right, right. as well. Yeah. Now you deploy a drone. Yeah. Drone with a intelligence at the edge, mm. being able to understand, go take the pictures, look yeah. at a crack. Now it's connected smartly. It's not yeah. only doing that inspection part of it, yeah. in 45 minutes, increasing the productivity, mm. uh, making it safe and efficient, 
but at the same time it's connected intelligent edge so real time it's able to raise a ticket saying hey this is a crack this needs to be prioritized this needs to be right. fixed today right. and then move on to the next thing yeah. so this is just an example how yeah. the digital transformation is happening and right. 5g is at the enter, uh, center of all of this right, right. yeah yeah and um, so let, let's put a microscope on this topic of 5g though right sure. um, because even in that remote scenario that you provided you know some of the things that you would assume uh, such as you know um, being able to take a maybe a video feed off of a drone uh, it, when you look at a remote environments um, 5g doesn't necessarily provide certain types of features or capabilities that you might want there but uh, taking a step back I mean as you guys look at 5g its role in how autonomous uh, systems because okay, you guys have all these reference designs yes. that you go to market with and you support your your customers and partners with how do you see 5g informing in particular in the near term the systems that you are number one designing and, and developing and uh, working with your customers with in bringing solutions to the market uh, hopefully sooner than later sure yeah I'll just briefly touch upon the previous topic we we're talking sure. about so you talked about this remote sites not having yeah. 5g actually brings in a lot of value there mm. 5g I mean today these wind farms are in the deserts or on offshore 5g comes with private networks mm. once you deploy private network your whole wind farm is lit up Mm -hmm. And that brings in the digital transformation needed for the wind farm offshore to be doing able to do a digital twin, to be able to do inspection, to operate swarm of devices and provide connectivity to uh, the folks and uh, maintenance crew there as well mm -hmm. because it's on a private network. And that's going to happen in factories because public network is not an option. They want most of the things intranet uh, as opposed to internet, right? Sure, so, sure, sure. So 5G comes with that. Uh, piece of the private network right. that enhances that digital transformation mm -hmm. in these connecting the unconnected spaces as well. Right, right. So that's the part. But to your point, yes, absolutely. So what we do is bring this reference designs as a starting point. So mm -hmm. think about the use cases that will happen. Nobody, I mean, taking a look back when Qualcomm worked on 4G, yeah. we moved from of voice call to video telephony to mm -hmm. video streaming and making all of that experience happen. But we didn't think about Uber, for example, yeah. at that time. Those are things that are uh, benefiting from the technology that was built in. Right. And similarly, things will happen with 5G. We don't know what we don't know today. Right. The industry that yeah. is going to drive, it is having mm -hmm. tremendous impact. But if you were a Uber and you wanted to develop an app, you should not be developing a phone to begin with, right? Yeah. You need to be developing an app. So you want to have a turnkey solution in your hand to mm -hmm. work on those things. So what we are doing is providing an ecosystem with this reference designs, with mm -hmm. everything, with all the sensors integrated, with mm -hmm. the software integrated, with the SDKs that are required right. for them to work on their cool killer application. Right. If you're doing a retail shelf scanning uh, yeah. application, you don't mm -hmm. need to worry about the navigation of the mm -hmm. robot. So we mm -hmm. provide that because we've been, I mean, like I mentioned, robotics is a focus area at Qualcomm. We, yeah. Yeah. we are one of the only semiconductor company I can say that we have a dedicated team. I run the business. We have mm -hmm. software, hardware, and all of this for robotics. And we have the privilege to be working with all kinds of robots. We mm -hmm. are providing... Uh, uh, robots at low end, two hundred dollar right. power robot yep. to vacuum cleaning robot right. to factory robots. Mm. Uh, we have deployed robots in people's home to clean floors. We have mm. deployed ro uh, robots on Mars. Sure. The Ingenuity yeah. helicopter is based right. on Qualcomm yeah. product, and my team worked on it. So we are very proud of it. But because we sit in this, uh, we are the epicenter of looking at all the ecosystem. We are understanding the pain points, right. and the pain point is. Why should I be thinking about which camera to use? Why should I be worried about the IMUs, right. the sensors that are needed for autonomy? Right. We need a turnkey solution. That, that's what we provide with our reference designs is out of the box mm -hmm. experience where people can take this, fly mm -hmm. a drone. Tomorrow you buy my drone reference design, right. you can right. start flying it. And now you can focus right. about your inspection use case. Right. Right. So that is what our philosophy is, thought processes, and that is how we think the innovation is going to take uh, a rapid 
step because now you build, give the building blocks, people can build on top. Right, of right. Okay. So one of the things Cristiano always talks about is this whole idea of always connected to the cloud, right? And one of the scenarios I think is really cool because it kind of blend it works well with the thesis I've developed around uh, edge computing, right? Is this whole idea of offload, right? And so. You know, if you look at robots, uh, they're, they're, they they pretty, you know, I guess you can virtualize a lot of the stuff, right? But, um, you know, uh, they're also, they tend to, number one, uh, operate in, s in certain constrained environments, right? Especially industrial. Uh, and then um, they themselves as devices may even be constrained. So what are your thoughts on this whole idea of, you know, when you're, con uh, the opportunity that 5G brings to have that very diverse uh, offload uh, portfolio of connectivity options, right? Absolutely. Because, you know, I think you know, when we think about 5G, we tend to think, you know, uh, in terms of the three ITU, you know, that triangle, yes, right? Yes. And, I, I, and I think um, that oftentimes dilutes the conversation and sure. it generalizes what 5G brings at the table. But, yeah, I, I want to delve into your brain here and maybe you can dig deep and sure. share some insights on how you see that, uh, uh, you know, offering some options and uh, flexibility. Absolutely. Well, it makes sense. The flexibility is the key thing here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about AGV and, mm -hmm. and I mentioned AMR. The fundamental difference is automated ve guided vehicle yeah. and autonomous mobile robot, right? This, yeah. Uh, uh, Little bit different because one is the old technology, then this is the newer technology. Right. And you talked about structured environment. Before, because of limited connectivity, because of limited intelligence, people would put these robots on tracks. Right. Yeah. And they would be That's only true. on structured environment, like right. in a warehouse, it goes from point A to point B, it is right. solving the problem. But to really unlock the value of autonomy, mm -hmm. it needs to be able to do this in unstructured environments. Right. For example, city, mm -hmm. it needs to be able to deliver product from here to the next the block out there. Right. But it's such an unstructured environment. Yeah. It's not pre-programmed to uh, just walk on a, a path. It will see obstacles. Yeah. It will see things uh, right. that it needs to avoid. So the real-time yeah. intelligence, that's where we say intelligence is paramount at the edge because it needs to be making decisions. Right. But then, like I mentioned, there's only so much intelligence you can they, they have the right. trade-offs, right? Because yeah. these are battery-operated devices. They are right. uh, all of this. Now that's seamless connectivity to the right. the bigger brain, which is the yeah. cloud or the edge. Yeah, that's the five G. And latency is important. You need right. to be able to make decisions right there. Right. And then comes the concept of federated learning. If there are fifty robots in this downtown San Diego right. making deliveries, one robot is learning machine learning. It's right. learning that I saw this, I avoided it. Right. Now it is able to put that learning up there and the rest of the robots are able to learn the same thing and be yeah. able to avoid it. Yeah. And that's the true value of 5G where connectivity becomes so seamless yeah. that you're tapping into the bigger brain, yeah. I call it, yeah. on on on, right. on right. on the dime when you need yeah. it, right? And when you don't need it and so yeah. that's where the, I think the value and the scale is gonna come yeah. when you will see robots integrated into mainstream and they act very naturally. Yeah. Yeah. be able to do things around right. it. And that will only happen yeah. with this distributed intelligence. Yeah, and I think that, that that's a nice parallel to what has to happen with the this autonomous vehicle concept, right? And like what I'm taking from you is that uh, what 5G and connectivity provides the autonomous uh, robot, I guess is the term we'll use, is contextual Information, information awareness and then because uh, you know something like safety right. it's really hard to realize that just on device or if you're depending on functions on a particular um, robot right, right. It, 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 safety is a collective thing and Absolutely. so yeah that, that's really interesting so hey, hey um, great sharing I really this is this is in a really fun conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think and a couple of, you know, off the cuff ahas. So that's always great, right? It is, it is. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And uh, the possibilities are limitless. Like yeah. you mentioned, we don't know what we don't know. These things right. will 
just evolve into new applications, yeah. new things, and whole concept of enhancing the human life. When drones are being used for first responders as de-escalation right. methods for police departments, every right. 911 call right here in our backyard, yeah. Chula Vista, first thing a 911 call happens, a drone is deployed even before they put foot on the ground. So things of this nature that will become uh, a norm will yeah. aid humanity right. and Precision agriculture is another thing yeah. where use of pesticides can be limited. So, I am super proud that Qualcomm is bringing all these technologies, which will enhance the society and uplift the uh, lives of people. Right. So, yeah, yeah this is uh, in the digital transformation era. I think we are in the right moment here together. No, yeah. I'm going to correct you. It's cyber physical transformation. I do. Okay. Cyber physical <laughs> transformation. Got it. Okay, Deb. Hey, cool. thank you thank so you much. So it's much. been a pleasure. I really enjoyed Absolutely. speaking with you. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.